Hey all, ABC, thanks for joining. <clears throat> um, uh, hope everything is going well and cool. And um, my last video I mentioned I was going to go to a show, I didn't go. So uh, my update is really just on one purchase, a couple albums I, uh, I, um, I got from my secondary collection uh, in another part of my basement. And um, two books. So uh, I'm just going to jump right in. A purchase I made, I've talked about Brian Eno. Uh, this is an album called Ambient 2, The Plateau of Mirror. This is an album uh, with Harold Budd, who's just brilliant. Both of these guys together. Harold Budd is, uh, doesn't like to use the word ambient. He says soft pedal. So um, the, the combination of these, these two guys are just remarkable. Uh, this is <laughs> this is, again is the genre where it's just slow, easy, slow paced uh, music. Um, uh, I I like to call it jellyfish music. If you ever go to aquarium um, or whale music, <laughs> but it's definitely uh, just brilliant work. Um, also, Harold Budd works with a couple other folks, but one person uh, is Robin uh, Guthrie. He is uh, the guitarist from the uh, Copta Twins. And I'm going to put a link down below. Uh, check it out. Um, just listen to this. It's just so soothing and great. Um, so this is about 10 songs on this album. Uh, again, very slow, moving, and, and wonderful um, from 1980. Uh, mint condition. I got this from a vendor friend. I purchased it. He mailed it to me. Um, it's still in the shrink wrap. No cutouts. It's from Strawberries. Uh, Show 649. Um, so uh, in my basement, I have another part of the basement. I have uh, some records that I grew up with and other ones I bought uh, <clears throat> for my collection. Uh, when I heard this one song, um, it's uh, from the movie Captive. Uh, the song was is called Heroin. Um, it had it just the woman sounded like an angel and. Uh, I went out and I found out who it was, and it was actually Edge who played the music, and Sinead O'Connor, Sinead O'Connor, uh, who played, uh, who sang uh, the song. Great, wonderful song. You listen to that, crank it up. It's just so well done. Uh, the, the production is great. But this is uh, this is an album Edge made for this uh, this um, movie, and it, it has sounds of Tomita, of Tangerine Dream. Um, and Edge's wonderful guitar work with delays and acoustic and uh, just really cool record and that's why I pulled it out again to listen. Uh, here's another soundtrack. Um, the movie's just phenomenal, cult classic and most of you probably know it is Blue Velvet um, <clears throat> from uh, I guess yeah the mid 80s also and this needs no explanation this movie. If you haven't seen it and you want to great bizarro flick <laughs> watch this one uh just warning it's 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 got some uh doozies in there a lot of one-liners the paps blue ribbon um okay so uh this is from my original buys in uh in the early in the late 70s uh ted nugent is free for all i don't have to go too much into this we know that you know what he is who he is uh, but I do want to point out somebody who doesn't get the recognition is Derek St. Holmes. Does the vocals, does rhythm guitar for Nugent. Um, just hats off to that guy who does really a great job. When I lived in Boston in the uh, late 80s, um, I uh, knew of a guy who worked in a, uh, a music store over on Newberry Street uh, by Mass Ave. Um, I don't know, it's not there anymore, but his band was called The Rain. I would check them out often. They made this album, um, When the Night Comes Down, The Rain. Uh, good, fun rock and roll pop. Uh, this album I pulled, my wife likes uh, Phil Collins. I bought this album back in the mid-70s. Um, this is uh, No Jacket Required. I bought it because I really like the song Take Me Home. Um, I remember the video and uh, really it was a cool cool song. The other ones I, I really don't care for but uh, I'll listen to it. Um, the funny thing is this still has a sticker from Crazy Eddie. 
those of you in New York know who Crazy Eddie was, um, like a Best Buy, uh, but a smaller store, and they sold all sorts of equipment and electronics and um, record albums. They had a record section, so that's where this came from. Um, the commercials for Crazy Eddie was just crazy. It was just bizarre, obnoxious. Um, <clears throat> This is from my wife's collection, Foreigner, the two albums, Double Vision, and I guess this is the, the first one from 77. I don't know what it is about Foreigners, but women love Foreigner. Um, so uh, they're, they're really, they're great. They're good, good rock and roll. Um, anyway, uh, the last album I have is a, is a, called Studio Work. Um, this is a album from the Stones doing a lot of alternate takes from a lot of songs, ones that didn't make on the album, others did. Uh, looks like back then I paid $20 for this. Uh, but this has, I'll just read off, you know, from a couple songs from 64, like they have Heart of Stone, alternate takes with pedal steel guitar. Um, Street Fighting Man, early take, different words. You can see a lot of these, listen to a lot of these uh, outtakes on, on YouTube. They're, they're all out there, you know, all down the line, acoustic version. These are outtakes from Exile, Sticky Fingers, Goat's Head Soup, um, which is, you know, that whole period is just blows me, blows me away. Um, the Jive and Sister Fanny, uh, some outtake of that, Coming Down Again with an alternate take, intro only. So, you know, it covers all the way up to 73. Um, Stone Studio work, I just love the Stones. Okay, so here's a book I got today. Um, this is James Taylor, a biography by Timothy White. Um, I got this um, in a, uh, a little, a new bookstore um, in Pound Ridge, New York. Uh, Pound Ridge is like a little village. And um, the woman there has a, a uh, very pleasant, very nice, um, Booksy Galore, B-O-O-K-S-Y Galore. Um, she does have things out on Amazon, I believe, so you can check it out. Uh, and I bought this book, but look at this picture of James Taylor, I thought it was really cool. So this is his bio, he has a great history, everything from you know his relation with Apple and, and uh, Beatles and Carly Simon, etc. Uh, he had a real interesting life, so I look forward to this, uh, listening to this book. So thank you, Booksy Galore. My BCLT, my book community love train. Um, I am opening this up, and this is from Dixieland Farm Chris. Just got this today, and this is a book I've wanted and I love it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Chris. Really cool book. What is it? Record Store Days. This is a book that's going to tell you about vinyl when it started back in the 50s and the record stores. Um, I know this book. I don't have it. I am so psyched to look through this and read it. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I could show you. Uh, so there's, there's pictures like in here, a uh, record store, uh, a meet and greet with Michael Jackson, you know, back at a record store day. Uh, they got like El Elvis Presley, I just saw, you know, walking through a record store. But uh, it really talks about the history of record store and vinyl. Um, and this is a great book. This is cool. This is a picture, uh, if you remember the scene in Clockwork Orange. Um, when they, they went into the record store looking through albums, uh, Alex and his friends. But um, great, great book. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, put a smile on my face. That's about it. Uh, might go to a record store this weekend. Snow's coming. Who knows? Uh, keep rocking, everyone. Thank you so much. And uh, show your vids. I'm watching. Take care. Bye-bye.